Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hey, Suki. Hey, Mia. Hi, Suki. Hi, Pat. How are you? I am good. That's a good thing. How are you? I'm hanging in there. What can I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we're going to wait for people to come in. We'll wait about, I would say maybe about three more minutes. Okay? Sounds good to me. Okay, okay. Oh, by the way, Pat, um, uh, since John is here tonight, you know, last meeting, he had emailed me before the meeting to say he wasn't going to be able to attend. I think I forwarded it to you and Mia. Yeah. Um, I marked him absent for last meeting, but I just wanted to um, let you know that he emailed us beforehand. So I really, so we just need to... I'll mark him as excuse then. Okay. Okay. That way it won't be against him. Okay. Thank you, so, John, we have your back. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Hi, John. How are you? Good. Thanks, Pat. Good. Good. Less busy tonight. Still very busy, but less busy. <laughs> well, you know, because listen, we all, people are voting and doing whatever, you know, there's a lot going on. That is right. Yeah, I know. They really uh, pulled out all the big guns at the last minute. Oh, my God, right? yes. And you know, they had something early in Prospect Park. Uh, at Ocean. They had a lot of politicians over there. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Attorney General. Um, and they had a whole lot of people over there, as a matter of fact. Well, I hope that people are asking for everything they need, because <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> Well, you know what? At the end of the day, the votes got to get in. So we got to see where we're going here, you know? But, you know, whoever they vote for, you know, just people just need to get out and vote, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. Hi, Nicola. How you doing? She might be away. I am good. Oh, hey, how are you? Good, thanks. Great, great. Yeah, so we got a couple of more minutes and then we're going to start. Okay. So I said people are probably out and about tonight. Hi, Alicia. Oh, I can see you tonight, huh? You got a camera on tonight. Oh, oh her audio's not on. Hi, Mia. Hey, Mrs. Moses. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hey, Esteban. Hi. Hi, Alicia. So we can see you tonight, huh? Yes, I finally got that together. Well, I was actually in Bangkok, so the last oh, wow. time. You where? Yes, I was in Bangkok, so I was using somebody else's computer. Oh. Oh. So I'm back home. So now you can welcome see. back. <laughs> welcome. So listen, tonight, you know, I, I mean, we're gonna try to 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 end at a, 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 a earlier time. So we're gonna be running through stuff kind of quickly. 
That's what, so Esteban can get out and vote tomorrow. <laughs> Drag myself across the street. Oh, you're right across the street. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So it's a little treacherous out there right now with Tivoli crumbling to pieces. Um, right. Yeah. Bad. That's crazy. Very crazy. But we saw it because we knew it was coming because we could see some bricks missing from before. Yeah. Okay. So it is now um, 7.06. And I guess we can start. Yeah, we can start. So again, I want to say good evening to everyone. And the rules of order are still in place. And if you want to speak, please raise your hand. And again, we just want to respect everyone that's going to speak. Okay, so now we don't have very much on the agenda this evening. However, um, we have old business. Um, there was a motion that was on the floor on 1018 to table a subcommittee on city of yes and citizens budget commission. And I think that y'all want to do some research or, or have a discussion on. So let's just, we're gonna open it up for discussion. And these are committee members. Don't everybody say everything at once. Well, I, you know, I'm not a committee member, but I am a resident, so I think I should have a right to also. Comment. Yeah, you will. You will later. I want to. I want, but I want them to talk because they had a motion on the floor, so they got to turn around and we got to see where we're going to go with this. Go ahead, Suki. Um, well, well, so before you go, before you, before yeah. you what I like you to do, yeah. um, since you, I know you attend those meetings for city, yeah. I want you. I would like you to give an update. Okay, so um, I attended the first meeting on October 17th. I don't know if anybody was able to attend the October 27th I meeting. It. You did. Yeah, we watched a YouTube video uh, earlier today. So. Yeah, so uh, th really there's three parts to it. There's zoning for zero carbon, which is related to uh, measures to improve uh, the environment and reduce carbon emissions. Then there is the zoning for economic opportunity, which is related to commercial zoning for businesses. And then there's the zoning for housing opportunity, which is related to zoning for affordable housing. So um, the first part, the zoning for zero carbon, I would say that 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 is related to zoning law, but I think it's more re closely related to Department of Building Regulations. And I think that we had asked the Environment Committee to take a look at it. Um, so I, I think that, that that probably does make sense. I think the zoning for economic opportunity that does pertain to us, it is, it is about commercial zoning districts. Um, but again, I, I, I think the changes are uh, like more nuanced really to the extent that I think we should be interfacing with the economic development committee and we can be talking to them about the zoning code, but they should be talking to us about, you know, how this would affect businesses and our business corridors. I think the zoning for housing opportunity is where we really need to pay attention because it's actually very broad. There's a few different proposals, you know, some of them are about, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, allowing for office to residential conversions. We really don't have office buildings in this district, but it, that's obviously going to have a fairly big impact in, you know, Midtown and Downtown Manhattan. It's potentially adding tens of thousands of units of housing because the there's a lot of vacancy right now in the office sector. Um, then there's a, a, a proposal to change the um, number of different sized units, for example, to, to like right now there are requirements that a, a certain number of units in a building 
that's a certain size have to be two bedrooms or one bedrooms or studios. So this would lift those requirements and allow a lot more small units, like a lot more studios and one bedrooms. And then the part that is really concerning, I think to us and, and really to many parts of the city is that all our five and higher districts would get an automatic increase of between 20 and 50% of the amount that can be built on that lot. So in the R5 districts, the increase that's allowed is 50%. That's a lot. Um, in the, you know, and then like there's, there, it's different in different zoning categories, but pretty much most zoning categories get an increase. And our neighborhood outside of Lefferts Manor, outside of, um, you know, like we, we have some very small kind of commercial and manufacturing areas, pretty much our whole neighborhood has R6 and R7 zoning, Washington Avenue has R8, all of those areas would get an automatic up zoning. And we know that there's already issues, our neighborhood is already overzoned, houses are already being knocked down. So this would just make the problem even worse. And it really, like, I, I cannot emphasize enough how much of the city this would affect. I mean, we're really, if this really went into effect as is, you know, we're we're talking about potentially like hundreds of thousands of new units across the city. It's not that it would all happen overnight. You know, buildings don't get demolished. Like just, it's not like the zoning changes and we wake up tomorrow and they get demolished, but it's just an incentive for the owners to sell for development instead of continuing to rent to people who live here, instead of continuing to rent to small businesses here, they say, oh, you know, now I can build so much more. Developers look at that and say, now it's worth it for us to redevelop this lot and you're gonna get a lot of existing buildings demolished. So I think that's something that we really, really need to look at. And, you know, just. Okay, yeah. um, Nicola. Okay. You are referring oh. to the expansion of the the, the ZQA? Is that yes. the decision you're yes. talking about? Where Because that existed before, but it was primarily for senior housing. Now they want to yeah. expand basically all of the affordable Yeah, categories. and so like the reason uh, that ZQA was not a bigger disaster before, I think there's two reasons. So Apparently, H, the program did not really, even though the law was passed in 2015, the program did not really become effective until maybe like 2018 because HPD had to put out a term sheet to work with the developers and they took their time on that. And then like a year or a year and a half later, this fair housing lawsuit stopped it. I guess they were saying that, you know, because it was only for seniors, it was not fair housing. So we saw, I think, exactly like three developments that have come before our committee that used that ZQA bonus. And, you know, people were complaining about it, like Diane Shepard was complaining about the one on President Street and then the one on Sullivan and Flatbush. That's a ZQA development. There's another one on Winthrop. So they happen. It's just that the window of time for them to happen was limited by other factors. I mean, the other thing is because we had 421A, why wouldn't, you know, of course they were going to use that. And, you know, if you can do affordable housing for 130% of AMI and, and get, uh, you know, get this tax break, why would you do it at 80% of AMI for seniors and get whatever zoning bonus they were going to get? So that's basically the reason why it wasn't more broadly used. But now 421A has gone away. And now they're expanding the program. Maybe they'll get around that fair housing lawsuit and potentially, you know, it really does apply across the city and across our district. Okay, thank you. Now, can you just tell everyone what ZQA is? What is it's that? Uh, zoning for quality and affordability. Um, this goes back to 2015. Uh, I, Alicia, I know you were around at that time um, it was it was very controversial at the time. I think the, like 80% of community boards voted against it because 
you know, they saw this, a lot of problems with this. This was packaged with and pushed through with MIH. With MIH. That's it was right. MIH and ZQA came yeah. through and was pushed through. The community boards voted against it. The city council, however, yes. voted. Most of the community voted boards were against it. it. City council yeah. still voted for them and pushed them through. Yes. 54 out of 59 voted against it. Yes, that, so it's more than 80%. It's like 90%. Okay, Esteban. Um, yeah. that's the, that's the uh, what do you want? We're, we're talking about, uh, you know, there was a motion to table, so we want to get right. you know, sure. what you're saying here. Uh, what are you thinking or what are your recommendations? So based on um, what I was hearing in the, uh, and like I said, I watched the second video, which was the most recent, um, the most recent uh, presentation, and I encourage folks to watch it. Um, it's not super exciting. They don't have a whole lot of details, but what was clear is that what they're saying is not really what's happening. Like what they're saying is we want to, we want to, you know, gather feedback and like we haven't decided anything yet, but they clearly have because we know what, what they're talking about. We know they're talking about accessory, accessory dwelling units. We know they're talking about, you know, they, they, it's very clear what they, what they're laying out. So um, nonetheless, I think that we should be approaching this as like, we need to make recommendations to these uh, to, to like official recommendations that would come first from this committee and then from uh, you know from CB9. Again, community boards have been overridden in the past, but I think what you're seeing now is a, a, a trickle of the erosion of any sort of community input in these things. Like so, we're doing these like broad citywide things. Well, we know that the neighborhoods in the city are not the same, and you can't just like apply a broad you know, a broad rule to all the neighborhoods and expect it to work. So, um, so yeah, and I'm also like kind of suspect just because we're, we're talking like a, pro a process that's facilitated and run by the Department of City Planning and we have not had good experiences with the Department of City Planning up until now. So uh, my trust is very much uh, uh, not, not present. Um, so yeah, I don't have like, you know, specifically about the, the proposal. They're not really giving any details other than to say, one thing that I would that I would love to caution folks about is that they're doing this weird thing that they started doing last year with the Soho rezoning, which is to try to make the development angle, the, the, the racial justice angle. And it's very frustrating to listen to because uh, they talk about gentrification, about displacement, about um, all these things that the things that they're talking about, we know cause, but they're saying that it's, the, it's literally like the biggest gaslight. Like it, it was really frustrating to sit and watch it because there's like, like we know these things cause displacement. Like I do this work every day. I know this causes displacement, you know? Uh, so, um, and then the other thing I will, will add, uh, I agree with with uh, with Ziggy's notion that, uh, that there's gonna be a lot of demolition that happens. Uh, case in point, 15 years ago when, when Tivoli was, was purchased, uh, the developer wanted to demolish it because it was cheaper and more profitable to build an even taller tower facing the park. Um, they were able to figure out a regulation, like regulations that went around that, but they've let that deteriorate to the point where I don't know that there's anything they can do at this point to make that structure functional anymore. They literally have like, they've, they've let it fall apart so that they can do what they were going to, what they wanted to do to, to, you know, till the political climate was the way that it, they wanted it to be. So uh, you know, I've spoken a little bit with uh, Para Superman Forest's office, and like we're just trying to figure out what to do because like this, it looks like a really bad situation, and it's not the only place where that's happening. So, all that to say, I think we need to. I really think that we need to um, to pursue this, and uh, and also, you know, obviously the other um, the uh, the even bigger changes that um, that Alicia's brought up and has done the analysis for on the. Um, on the uh, the citizens budget commission or whatever, um, I don't know. I I think that those make sense together, just because we can decide as a committee, and then at, you know the community board can support or not support that. You know whatever it is that we decide is our position, but I do think we need a clear position on all of these things um, because we have we have the experience to do it, and this community has actually done this work uh, and done it successfully. So. Uh, so that would be my recommendation that we that we actually do start pursuing pursuing this like officially and formally. John, would you like to say something? Got to unmute yourself, John. Uh, sorry, no, I, I 
I, yeah, I think this is, I, I, I agree with both uh, Suki and Esteban. This is, there's a lot of very broad brushed uh, proposals that are being put forward. And, uh, you know, we have to do our best, I think, to reframe this to, you know, what the community boards do best, which is really put the local focus on these, uh, you know, citywide regulations. So. Okay, so um, okay, so what are we doing here now? There was, I mean, are you are you saying that we should have a committee, or are you saying yes. that we should we okay. should address the issue here as a committee to bring forth to the board? Is that what you're saying? Um, I just I'm not sure that we have quorum tonight to even vote. I know, but we're just we're, we're discussing. I'm trying to understand where okay. we. Where. How, how many people do we officially have on on the ULERP committee right now? Nine. Do we have one? I'm going to take a three, four. Us, Okay, right? no, we no, do. We, we do. do. We have. Yeah, yeah. We I'm do. just trying to think of the number of people to have like a you know a targeted group. Okay, no, we do. We have we have five tonight. So yes, okay. we we can do a vote. Right. To, to clarify, to clarify what I was what I was saying, I was saying that I think that we need a subcommittee. I think that some of that stuff is very is very. You need uh, what? That we need a subcommittee to be able to like. I just think it, it's a really. It's I really don't understand. Dense. Okay, and I, I want you just to tell me, in reference to what your subcommittee is going to do, because we are the. Let me just finish. We are the committee. And and when you have a sub, that means that you're really branching out on what what we're bringing forward. And we have to look at everything. We have to look at what are they doing. And, and it's not just, let me just say something. It's two issues that we're talking about. Because we, we, we also have to look at the um, uh, the, the issue with the, uh, was it City Budget Commission? Because they, mm -hmm. they kind of go hand in hand. And the way mm -hmm. that they're doing it is like we're separated. And we have to look at both. Because if we're looking at, and this is my view, we have to look at both issues as a committee because they're talking about uh, the community board really having no input in terms of, of what's going to happen in the community in terms of zoning, and that really scares me. So, so to me, I, I need—I mean, I haven't heard of another meeting going forward, you know, and so. For the community boards to me need to have input and especially if we're talking about zoning issue and have you if you've been listening to the news recently all i've been hearing is about zoning so mm -hmm. what are you talking about so my whole thing is the reason that i'm not so and y'all can vote on it i'm not so you know in terms of just going and separating because i don't know what we're separating about i think we need to have, get some information and find out what in the world is really going on because when you do go and you listen to what they're saying, it's like, oh, we're not really, they're just putting it out there, but they're not really saying exactly what's going to happen. And a lot of these right. things they can't even do without votes from the from the um, Senate. They can't do without changing the charter. And this right. is what we have to be aware of in terms of what's going to happen. Suki? Uh, um, so... Yeah, I, I I do agree. I actually think that the kinds of things that were being proposed by the Citizens Budget Commission, which is no more environmental impact statements, um, no community board uh, review, th this is actually what is going to be implemented by City of Yes in a backdoor kind of way, right? Because once these amendments are passed one time by the City Council, all of these upzonings are automatic. So they no longer have to come back to us for each little upzoning, right? They no longer have to come back to us and say, can you give me an upzoning on this block or on this half block, right, in your R6 or R5 area, because it's already been upzoned for them. Now they can already build bigger. And one of the things that I asked during the information session was, is there going to be an environmental impact statement for the citywide effect are you going to show which areas are impacted, you know, especially in terms of, as Esteban was saying, like who who gets impacted? And they said, yes, yes, yes. But I bet you that, you know, at the end of the day, if they can, they're going to turn around and not do it or it's not going to be done properly or whatever, you know, so. 
but this is what I'm saying. You see, it's not just uh, we, we're in the ULA lands is in, but you also have the environmental group over here, which is our committee. They have to, they have to, they have to handle certain things. So it has to be divided so that everybody looks at a part of it. Yeah. Because at the end of the mm -hmm. day, it's got to be voted on by the the board. But to me, they have me kind of scattered out all over the place. So I just want to know what it is, what do you want to do moving forward? Well, I, I would like to just jump in and state that I think because the text amendments are now actually being put forth, not, you know, the text amendments are being put forth. And so that's a clear action that the city is taking to make these changes. And because they are so broad, it is important for everyone to understand what those changes are and how they will affect, because that is the actions that currently are happening. Right there, there is no current action to remove community boards from the EULA process. So there's no current action to remove the environmental review from the EULA process. So I think it's important to conserve your time and energy to focus on what they're trying to do right now and figure out how it's supposed to get done because there's a lot of questions about how a text amendment is actually supposed to happen. So that's what the committee should do. First, the committee should figure out what is the legal process in which a text amendment can be done? What, what channels do they have to go through? That's the first thing. How many people know that? I don't even know that. I asked, I sent an email to Suki and asked her and she didn't respond back to me. And nobody, most people in this committee doesn't even know that point. And that's a very important point. How are these text amendments supposed to happen? Are they supposed to go through the ULIP? Do they go to the borough board? Do they just go to the city council? You, so first you have to figure out that. And then you also yeah. have to get them at these effects. So I think if you had a committee and the committee focused just on the text amendment, you could probably get something done. And it should not be done in this committee because this committee never has enough time to even finish its business. It has to be in a subcommittee where they will focus just purely on looking at these requirements, the text amendment requirements and seeing how they would affect us. Nicola? Right, I agree. Now, the first thing is that uh, in terms of the legal process, we lived through MIH and ZQA. And there was no, there were no, from what I remember, um, environmental studies. No. There was no, no right. formal ULERP. They presented there to the community similar. boards and they asked for, you know, our vote or recommendation. There was a formal ULA. There was a ULA. There was a ULA process. Okay, so so now what I'm what I'm asking the committee is because you you have to make you have to take a vote on this. Okay, so so when you when you're talking about uh, a sub, it's really a subcommittee. Um. You, you, you have to have people that's willing to meet outside of this committee and to bring right. back information. So right. that means that you have to invest your time to do that. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure who would want to, you know, everybody's not going to be on the committee and you know that. So I, I just need to know if we would have e e enough people to actually, because let me just say something. I believe that you have to break yourself up into parts. Because you got uh, uh, what Suki, you attending like these uh, uh, forums. I'm attending these forums, and I don't know. So we have to we have to, we have to look at facts because we remember at the end of the day, we got to bring it back to the to the board. But also we we also have to hopefully that the other committees will get involved because we cannot do everything. We cannot do economic and this and that. No. We have to. I'm just saying, but I'm just saying that. I hope that you know the other ones will other committees will get involved in what they need to do. Um, so we we are going to take a vote in a minute, and we're going to Nicola. You want to say something before we uh, try? Well, my hand was up from before, but um, okay. in, well, in regards <laughs> to the Euler process that and the fact that we've experienced a text amendment. Um, I mean, we could research additional legal requirements, but we kind of went through their version of the text amendment with, with MIH and ZQA. So we have some idea of what was done and not done with those processes. And I don't see it being any more rigorous than those were. 
Well, I, I don't know if these particular text amendments fall underneath the EULA process. And so that's why I don't really know. I've been told that actually certain types of text amendments will go through the EULA, other types of text amendments will actually go to the borough board. Other types of text amendments can go through the city council. So it depends upon the type of text amendment. They didn't do an EA, EIS or e, uh, because they said that they were not actually talking about the increase in affordable housing. They just talked about giving bonuses or, or setting aside affordable housing for increases. So the increases would still fall underneath the normal EAS and EIS regulations. All they were doing was saying that that's, that they would give you know more added bonuses. So they did not do an EIS or EIS. Yes. Well, this is very different. If you're talking about taking the zoning law and allowing a massive increase in zoning just because, you have to. then okay. you have to do it. Okay, but what, what, what I'm basically saying to each of you is this. When you're, when you're, when you're doing this stuff, you still like, you have to um, be available also to make those meetings, at least one of you, you know, when they have the meetings with the, you know, the city or what like somebody has to actually make those meetings, you know, to to, have, to bring forth because you know whatever you bring forth also has to be you know writing to us so that we can know exactly what we're talking about or what we're looking at. Yes, Esther. So, I, so I have two recommendations. The first is that actually the housing portion of this uh, this text amendment process is based on a 238 page report called Fair Housing Together Where We Live NYC. Very dense. Um, I have to go through this stuff anyway, like li literally just for what I do on a day to day basis. Same with Alicia, like this is what we do. So we have to do this anyway. My recommendation would be that, um, and I don't know if Alicia is, is down for this, but I feel like if, if Alicia and one or two people from the committee wanted to like really like do this, this work, because like Alicia's already done the work on the, on the analysis of the other stuff, but I don't like, there are a few people that I trust with the legal stuff more than, uh, more than Alicia, but like, it's important because the, the fact is that we're probably gonna have to file an article 78 over this anyway. So like, we really need to know what we're doing here. I also think yeah. that we need to interject yeah. the, the political question into here because what happened with MIH when a majority of the community boards voted against it, but the council did it anyway, was that there wasn't political power. Like they didn't, we weren't able to convince them to do what we were saying to do. And that that falls on the community board to do. So those are all things that I think we need to like be really like getting into. And and again, some of us have to do that anyway. So like, you know, like I, I have to read the 238 page report, whether I do it here or I do it through suits to you, like it doesn't, you know, so that's my, you know, my, I, I think that unless you want to have three or four hour meetings every month here. I'm not this doing is how it. We do it. <laughs> you know, you got the wrong person, right? So this is what I want to do. Alicia, you, I'm going to have to close you down because they're going to have to take a vote here. Um, we need to do the roll call first. So let's make it official. Okay. Um, uh okay Warren this is, what I, this is what i want to do oh, first Warren's let me do this first he what, just came what, what's the motion going to be here oh warranty okay so okay so i wait warren can can you hear us warren yes hello everybody i had an egc meeting that's why i'm late were you excused so can you <laughs> i i don't know you you said okay pat when i told you yeah you're good you're good uh, okay okay so um so we tabled it and we had a discussion around um, the motion of 10 18 22 to develop a subcommittee. And so I would like for somebody to put a motion on the floor. And who wants to do that? Okay, Esteban, you can put the motion on the floor. Uh, well, make it long now, make it count. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. could, I, could I briefly confer with Alicia so that I'm getting there? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because she can't vote on it. Though. No, 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 not to vote. Just to make sure that I'm putting the stuff in there that we need to have in there. Uh, honestly, I think that's... Don't make it too long. Make it kind of short. No, 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 no. So... Uh, need some help, Alicia. What the... You want to make... Because we got to put the motion on the floor here. So what the is... Motion, mm -hmm. the motion... motion is to create a committee that would look at the text amendments and analyze the text amendments, figure out what 
legal process that that is required for each text amendment and to look at the effects of the text amendment on our community. Okay. And you write that it. down, Esteban? Yep. <laughs> okay, what's the motion? So the motion is that we create a subcommittee out of the ULERP committee that would analyze uh, the text amendments that would uh, that would figure out the legal requirements and legal ramifications of the text amendments and would also determine how those text amendments would specifically impact this community. Um, and that, that subcommittee, I guess that subcommittee would would make a you know a report or I don't know how, how to phrase that, but like would would report back to the to the ULERP committee for um, you know for making recommendations, however we want to do that. So this is just to, to establish that we have that committee. And then I guess I would add that we that uh that's too long now. Come on, uh, now. No, no, I want I want to make sure <laughs> that's too that long. Just get it to the point now. Yeah, too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring findings to back to the Euler committee. Hold on a second. Exactly. You know, you do this because we're doing the legwork and then bringing the findings back to the Euler committee for for the review. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. What did you say, Nicola? I'm saying that the subcommittee is doing a lot of the legwork and then bringing the findings and recommendations back to the ULIP committee for further review. Okay, but I need to have a, a clear motion so that so can write it down and, 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 and bring it back to us. Not so long, just to the point. So Nicola, do you wanna just kind of give us a short Well, what was your first part, um, Esteban? You said create a subcommittee to analyze relevant, um, the relevant text amendments. And and associated city with of yes, text city amendments? of yes, city of yes, okay. amendments. Um, wait, so brief, brief aside, should we specify that it's the, the no, housing portion or should we say it for all of it? For all oh, that's what you said. Let's okay, we got to get this straight. I now. think we can say for all of it, and part of our recommendation right. can be that other committees should look at certain right. parts of it, right. right? So, so we need to get a motion that's kind of clear and kind of short. So, okay, so let's try it again. Try it. Create a subcommittee that will analyze the text amendments that will determine the legal ramifications of those amendments and the effects that those amendments will have on the community. So, uh, good. so analyze legal effects on the community. And uh, you don't and have to say all that though. You've made it clear yeah. in your first uh, bit. So let's read that one back because that's it's clear. We, you can do that when you get in your sub. Okay, read back the read back the motion again. Me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't need to read back. So, so, gotta re re repeat we, it. so I make a motion that we create a subcommittee that will analyze the city of yes text amendments, that will determine the legal ramifications of those text amendments, and will determine the effects that those text amendments will have on this community. And I want to add one provision that the that the subcommittee be made up of Euler committee members and community members that are going to be affected by this. Uh, that's, yeah. Okay. Can we get a second? Second. Okay. So before we vote, because we're going to take attendance, a second, I want you to read it back so, so that when we, they okay. vote, when we have it in writing, you know, everybody know what we're saying. Um, motion to create a subcommittee uh, hold on. Motion to create a subcommittee that will analyze the city of yes text amendments, their legal ramifications and their effects on the community and report findings back to the ULERP committee. Sounds good. And we, it was second by um, Nicola. 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 So we need to take a vote. Suki. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna call the roll. Mm -hmm. Uh Pat Moses. Yes. Uh Warren Burke. Yes. Suki Chung, yes. Uh Rashida. Sykes, absent. Okay, I won't call the absence. No, call um, the absence because we're going to mark them out. 
-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Tom Thomas is absent. He's excused. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Esteban Heron. Yes. Nicola Cox. Yes. John Craver. Yes. Um, did I miss anybody? Uh, no. Fred's not usually, Fred's not considered a member of our committee. No, right? no, he's not. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's only okay. on nine. So you have to tell us how many, so how many yeses? Uh, so, okay. Um, there were basically no abstentions and no no's. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Why am I missing one? Could it be seven? Yeah, it should be. Why am I missing one person? Did you call Warren, Suki? Yeah, Warren. I, I did. I did. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. You forgot yourself? Six. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Yourself. Yes. Okay. So we have seven yeses. And no no's, no, no exemptions. Right. No no's. So the motion passed. Boom. Right. Now, this is what, Warren. Yes, Patrick, Warren. Do, we have, do we have quorum? Yes, we do. Excellent. Thank you. So the most, yes, the motion passed. Now, what I would like to, uh, I would like to uh, have the chair of the committee. Um, I mean, well, first of all, who's on the committee? That's what I want to know since it passed. Uh, but I would like to nominate somebody. I don't to have do to it. go because y'all could nominate your own person. <laughs> that's done. The, 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 I can't the, hear you, Alicia. That's normally how it's done. The subcommittee yeah. comes together and then they nominate their own. Uh, okay, chair. so can you give me who's on the subcommittee then? Um, who? Um, so I want you to write down the people name on the subcommittee. Okay. Esteban? Yes. Alicia Boy? Yes, I would like to be on it. Suki? Yes, I would like to be on it. Nicola? Huh? You're you're on mute. Oh. Yes, I'd like to be on it. Okay. John? Uh sure. Yeah. It looks like it's gonna hey, be great. Um, Warren? I'll pass, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we have um how many people? How about Teresa? I don't know if she's there, but anyway, so right now we do have enough. How many people we have now? That's going to, oh, you have five? One, two, three, four. Yes. Great. Yes. That's good. Y'all can start there. And then y'all will. I, and I'd love next... to recruit like a couple more people. Um, If maybe Alicia, you can help me with this. Like think of a couple of people from the community that are on the, on the committee that might want to do the subcommittee. Y'all um, can do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. As yeah. soon as you get your, uh, I don't know who your chair is going to be. Right, right. Um, but the the other thing is, um, you know, we'll email each other and find a date. And once we find a date, Mia will email you so that you can put it out to the public. Because as Alicia noted before, these subcommittee meetings are our public meetings. So I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mia, go ahead. I said, just keep me in the loop, guys, of course. Keep right, me too, oh, yeah. you CC me. Now I was going to, I was going to appoint somebody, but since I can't, I'm going to move on because I want a Nicola since she is all into the this and the that. You know, <laughs> I thought she'd be good for the chair. I agree, I agree uh, with that. Although y'all can decide at your meeting, but so I was, I was going thing. to recommend, huh? <laughs> I was yep. just doing the same. Thing, you was going to do the same I thing. Not, I was thinking about Nicola. <laughs> Yes, yeah. I think, yes, I think that um, she would be great. What do you think, Nicola? <laughs> we call that volunteering. Yeah, I'll share it. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Yes, okay. That's a good thing. So now y'all can get together and we can move on. 
So it's been great. So now I just want to go through the, um, so we did the roll call. So we have um, um, Mr. Thomas is excused. Now, um, we also have a non-attendance committee member that has three consecutive absences. And that particular person is Rashida Sykes. Please put her name down. Okay. And my recommendation is that I am going to recommend that she be removed from this committee because I have not seen her not at one meeting. She's been at zero meetings. Has she, she communicated to you at all? I've never seen her. I don't even know who it is. All I see is the name. And she's is never, she a board member? She is a board member. She's never been here. So my recommendation, which, which, uh, should be brought, which I'm going to bring forward to the executive committees that she be removed. I mean, at least show up at one meeting. So, but I, I, I'm surprised she hasn't said, "Oh, I have a conflict," or communicated no, to you at all. No, I don't know. I don't even know what the person looks like. I don't even know who the person is. I've never. How did she get up? She, I actually did. Member. Yeah, I actually did reach out to her and remind her that the meeting was tonight, and she said she would try to make it. Well, but this well, you know, I can move on because I'm. I, that's my recommendation. Um, I would yeah. like if, if if they could give me someone else, that'd be nice. Yeah, so she can move on to wherever she moves to because I haven't seen her. So yeah, anyway, then we we got a lot of work to do this right. this term. Right. We yeah. need so people that I'm are going. serious about being on the committee. Right. So I agree Warren, with that. Yeah. So Warren, Warren. Can you yes. hear me? Thank you. Yes, I hear I, I'm you. not going to be at the next executive committee, but can you bring her name forward for removal? Yes, I will. Thank you so much. Um, resident concerns. Now we're talking for anyone that want to speak in terms of the community. I mean, community. You can raise your hand so that I can see you, Jay. Jay. Yes. Okay. okay, go ahead. Um, two things, just to address two of the topics that were uh, covered before in which there was uh, uh, text amendments coming up and, you know, what could, what could the community do? Um, there's a racial impact uh, law out there. Uh, Jamani Williams, public advocate, was the one who uh, created it, went through the city council. So if people are concerned with, let's say, the text amendments, what can the community board to do in terms of having some uh, 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 some power or some uh, uh, you know some weapons to use against it. Uh, I think that the, the racial impact uh, 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 law, which refers to different developments and different things that could happen, may be very relevant uh, when you look at you know the community board and you say this is what can happen, et cetera. It, it went into effect June first for applications going forward this year. I think it's a powerful tool. I also think that fair housing laws are very relevant to what the city is doing. Um, uh, Mayor, Adam, Mayor Adams' uh, uh, City of Yes, which just speaks to uh, adding more supportive housing and more one bedrooms. Uh, when I went to the meeting, or when I attended the, the, the second zoning meeting, I asked uh, uh, at the presentation, what about for the families? Is it studios, one bedrooms, and two bedrooms? What kind of affordable housing are you providing for approximately 22% of the city units, which are four persons or more? The response was and I uh, and I to make it more colorful I said that you know different communities are made up of families families make up different neighborhoods different ethnic neighborhoods etc. The response uh, was and I've heard this several times the response was we don't need three bedroom apartments in affordable housing because if we create studios which are uh, and one bedrooms which are for affordable housing that's going to take away the 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 singles who are occupying the three bedroom apartments. Let me tell you the fallacy of that, just so you can, this, this was the response and it was, it's also online, they've used this more than once. If you have a three bedroom apartment, number one is even if you get the singles out of there, if you're lucky enough that it's gonna be replaced by a, by a three bedroom or like a four person family, that may not be affordable. So the whole concept of let's make it affordable, you're still gonna have market rate. The other thing for people who know, you know some economics and I know, uh, I think Suki and Alicia have uh, uh, experience in econ, or, or if not degrees. Um, if you have a three-bedroom apartment, and if you take out the singles, you know, it's 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 not a zero-sum game. So you're going to get people from like the Midwest and every place else where you remove the singles who go for 
let's say affordable housing in a studio in one bedroom, that three bedroom apartment is gonna be occupied by more people who are gonna come from, let's say, you know, the Midwest or something like that. So you're not, so they're gonna occupy the three bedroom apartment will just be a little a little lower price. It's not a zero sum game. So that's why I think the studios and the one bedrooms are also a big fair housing uh, uh, issue. That's and, what I was to tell you, if you will attend the housing, committee meetings i think that's one of their areas yeah. that they will be i i i, I do that they can I, look into i i do i attended really our and i attended I, the, I attended the environmental meeting for this uh for this community board and the environmental uh, um committee is um not really uh knowledgeable uh, uh or hasn't been really working on the environmental process in terms of the EIS and, and the different impacts and stuff like that. So it's never really been, I haven't really seen the environmental committee get involved with the EIS and everything like that. It should be, but it's a lot of information on it. Um, my, my, the second comment that I just wanted to say is that all of you, because community board nine is a transit zone, all of the affordable housing uh, uh, parking is optional. So you're gonna have that potential problem in terms of, of the bulk. And the third comment that I wanted to mention is that I, I received a response back from uh, New York, uh, uh, the ESD, Empire State Development, on these vital Brooklyn projects. Uh, because I said, listen, I've been doing a, a FOIL request for like 13 months. They won't give me any information and everything like that. Uh, and I want to know the parking in 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 six in uh, Kingsborough West, which is the 900 unit development, which I think is gonna really impact the community. And he told me to go back and take a look at the May meeting. I looked at the May meeting and the other project, just to how, in my opinion, there was very little public access. The May ULERC meeting here, which I watched on video, for uh, um, for Clarkson Estates, they came to the committee in May. The general plan was in June. So that means when they do their presentation in May, once the people are informed of it, the next month, if they want to say, listen, we're against it, let's take it to the community board, here's our suggestions, there wasn't enough time because the community board meeting in June was June 28th. So my problem is, is, that new, is that these big money projects come here at the last possible minute. They don't give the community the time and they don't inform them. And the proposal was, was the winning proposal happened like a year and a half before they came to the community board. So they are totally running a game on keeping people in the dark. Uh, and 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 the the project at Clarkson Estates, which isn't my issue, they have uh, uh, youth. It's the the target group is homeless uh, uh, homeless youths and uh, homeless from I, I think the foster you know from foster care, which I think is, is an important thing. But the mix is that also in that building is also a, a criminal is is from is is ex cons from the jails. So there's mm -hmm. an issue as to whether people I don't know if the community had an issue with it is that in, the, in terms of a vulnerable population that you have children, foster kids and homeless youth who are gonna be possibly in the same unit or built, uh, not the same unit, but same building with, uh, uh, with ex-cons from, from the jails. And you know, that's an issue which I think the community could say, look, we're not a problem with it, but they didn't have time. So on Kingsborough West, what I just wanted to make my request and I know I'm going over is that there's a way it can go through you look. And I would ask this if there's I would ask this uh, committee to, to reach out to the public advocate Hi, who has you. lawyers who work for them and to New York State Attorney General who has to sign off Hello. on it. And and to ask them if they can uh, uh, give an opinion on whether or not uh well, hello? I, gonna, yeah. who, who, who's who's saying hello? Well anyway, uh Jay, I you know, yeah. you brought you know these this issue up a, a number of times time. here. Right. But but again, it's uh we moved it is not in um, ULIP at this present time. Um, it's not a ULIP issue. Um, we had moved it on to the full board and that's the way it is right now. And, and a lot of, lot of what you're talking about needs to be placed where it needs to be in housing, not in ULIP. Be, not because in ULIP. because it, it's, it's, it's right a now, it's just, Right now, it's, it's state, it's a state right. project and right. it's not a ULIP project. And I think you brought it up a number of times. Um, and you know, if you're talking about certain housing and this and that and the other, 
um, you might want to, again, go to the uh, housing. Right. My, my point is, is that you can have the, op there, it, this may be your if the community board at, or, and if this committee takes a look at that avenue. We've already brought it up. We've already moved it forward to the full board. Can you, can you tell me what well, you've moved it to the full board? Yes. Right now, what was, what was the board, what was, uh, you know, we moved it forward because it is not a ULUP issue at this point in time. It is a state issue. I, 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 I think understand. the last, uh, the issue you had was you, you wanted us to um, get a, what you wanted us to get? Something you wanted us to get, well, I can't remember what it was. Well, can, 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 Just for a little clarity okay. really quickly, yeah. uh, Mrs. Moses, uh, Mrs. Sorrett, you made the four requests to the office. And I believe that Dante did reach out to the state and uh, they have, uh, I believe, answered him um, like within the last day or so. So he should be compiling a response uh, to you and forwarding any relevant documentation to the ULA, uh committee as well for review. Right. So, so just to just to respond to that, uh, uh, Ms. Hilton, the, the email that, that I received was uh, did not at all speak about it spoke about this one small issue, which mm -hmm. was um, which was the amount of um, uh, which was whether the, it was a question. It didn't even come from the committee. It was a, it was a separate question. I just sent an email myself mm -hmm. that said, is, are the homeless shelters going to be part of the 900 units? And the answer was no. Uh, there's a separate question which is out there as to whether or not the city, which has a right of reverter, whether that right of reverter, because it goes back to the city, is a property interest. That okay, I have can... to move on because this again, I'm not going to to discuss. I, I understand what Mr. Seward is talking about, and I right. believe that um, Don, Mr. Arnwine will be addressing you directly because it, right. it, 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 when, it, when will they when will they I give a when when are they going to give a presentation? Because it's a rezoning. They're He's rezoning actually trying to organize them to uh, possibly um, visit the committee in December and present updates and also field questions from the public. So we're un, trying to organize that on the back end to perhaps have them appear at the next meeting to update the community and the committee. Okay, thank you. Esteban? Uh, Mr. Sorin, feel free to reach out to me at oh. the office tomorrow just for any other further questions. Great. Sorry, that was thank an accident. <laughs> um, I'm going to take I don't know who's next. I was <laughs> next. Oh, who's I... next? Esteban? Oh, oh, okay. Alicia, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to be clear about the uh, racial impact. The racial impact is a category. I'm sorry, the what? The racial impact that was just passed is very similar to any other environmental category that a developer has to look at when they're proposing a rezoning that has to go through the EULA process. So just like they have to look at water impacts, so they have to look at you know shadow impacts, so it happens after the law. So they're not going to give you, at this stage, they're not going to give you an environmental impact, which is one category in the environmental impact is the racial impact until they make a decision to now go forward and move this body of text member and make it law. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, Okay, Any, anybody else from the community want to say something, bring to our attention? Raise your hand. You have one thing, sorry. Um, the person that created the tool for the racial impact statement uh, lives in Community Board 8, and uh, we've been in communication with her through CHTU, so it might be worth discussing. Um, obviously, like these things don't have a whole lot of teeth uh, because you have to do this whole process, but there's nothing that mandates that you, that if they find that there's going to be a racial impact that they're not going to do it like that's not that's not the way it works unfortunately but it is a tool that can um certainly like help the you know help the political situation at least but you know everything's advisory yeah you know? <laughs> so okay what well, um before i close out i want to thank uh the uh the community um for bringing their concerns forward but before i close out i would like to know uh, when exactly will the subcommittee meet? I mean, I mean, what are you looking at? I mean, because you know, we we meet once a month. And I will give you the date. Matter of fact, our next meeting will be on December thirteenth. 
So I don't know how um, how y'all going to meet or will you have something at least to, even if it's two lines or something to bring back to us and then something also in writing that you're doing? Well, I would think that we would probably try to meet at least once a week. I'm not sure how many people are available, but the first meeting obviously would have set some goals down of what we want to accomplish. And then I obviously assign people to, uh, you know, accomplish those goals so that the next time we meet, you know, everyone sharing what they found out and any further information, and it keeps going like that. I would assume by the time you're meeting again for the Yulup that you would have at least had a minimum of three meetings. And from that space should give you some preliminary information, if not all the information. But I don't know if the committee will be breaks. Able to take oh. <laughs> I don't know if we, we can have three meetings before the next Yulup meeting. We have Thanksgiving coming up. There's a lot of other things coming up. So, but we will definitely meet and have some organization and okay, set a schedule. Okay. So our, our, our next meeting will be on December 13th at seven o'clock. And the only thing that I'm asking is that, you know, if I'm going to put if, if you know, if you would just shoot me an email or something so I can put you on the agenda. We want to do these in person or over Zoom? Hi, it's Warren. I yes, just want to, Esteban asked the right question in terms of process. Uh -huh. uh, since these are uh, public meetings, uh -huh. uh, we have to know, is it going to be virtual or in-person? Well, assuming and, it should be virtual because a CB9 yes. staff member would have to be staffing yes. this. So um, planning yeah. is important. Right. So when you guys uh, start your planning process, any tentative dates, just copy the board on the correspondence because you want to make sure that as a staffer there to attend and provide the platform. So right. and and the staff needs some notice, so the staff can move quickly. But let them know like a week ahead of time, a couple of days ahead of time, so they can know what's going on. Thank you. But me is not available every night. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh no, people got things to do now. But so Nicola, I'm basically, kidding, kidding. you would do what I what I would what I normally do is like I will like if you have a meeting day. You know, you shoot uh, Mia a, you know, through the board, uh, Mia a note saying we're going to meet on X, Y day. And then you have your agenda. And then I think that's how they post it. And then they move on from them. Because I think, because they have to have like a number, right? Y'all assign a number, Mia. Is that how y'all do that? Right. Yeah. Anybody, you guys any, so anybody else that wanted to attend from the community would be able to do that. Because I might even be able to sit in on some of the, you know, meetings that you have, but that you're holding, you know, if I know in advance. Yeah, and just for the record, uh -huh. uh, we have a very tight schedule. Um, you should check the website to see when the other meetings are, because it all comes down to staffing who can do these meetings. And we, okay, so we certainly want to encourage them. True. So Nicola and uh, Mia can kind of work that out. And that's it. I want to thank all of y'all for meeting this evening. So we would have had some turkey by the next time we meet again, since it's uh, going to be in um, December. Uh, Pat, can I say one thing, please? One last thing. You're not about the same thing, though, right? Can, can, can I just say one last comment, Pat? And that's it. I'll be I'll be brief. Just one sentence. Go ahead. The um, the topic on the uh, on the uh, the notes for the agenda says that this is a ULERP slash land use committee. So even though it may not be a ULERP issue now, it's still a land use issue because they're changing the land use. And this is the only committee that should have jurisdiction over land use and changes in it. And if there was a motion or something decided by the community board, can you tell, was it a motion that was decided? When you was were it? there, you, you, you know, my point is this, at this point it's state, it, I, I keep well, saying the I, same I'm, thing. I'm, I'm, state, not, I'm not asking. Not something but, that we're going to be dealing with right now when, when did the community board decide that when you you spoke at the community you spoke at the community board you said the same thing I, i'm not on the board but was it no a no you spoke but any the meetings are you spoke about what uh, when you you presented whatever it was that you presented and 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 you presented it to uh to the entire board and that was about the uh, it, mine was a personal comment there was never a motion on it 
I'm asking, how is it decided? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to, to interrupt Mrs. Moses. I think what Mrs. Sword is saying, if he's trying to confirm if there was a formal motion to do something outside of requesting um, the, making the foil, that was the only motion. That was the only, that that's what was brought committee. forward, right. That, that is not a determination of whether or not this, uh, the Kingsborough West is, is should be at the land. Well, I don't know. It's, it appears to me, you know, I don't know what your your objective is, but it appears to me that, you know, it's not that it appears that you have something against it or, or something like that, because you keep bringing it up and it, it looks like, you know, you're talking about uh, the number of apartments that's going to be there, what's going to be. It looks like you're really against it. And I think if that's what your issue is, you might want to get two minutes and bring it in forth to the uh, the community board itself at their next meeting. The, the I, land I, that's what I, I, I'm okay. listening, I've well, been listening to you and that's okay. what it appears in my head that well, you uh, well, uh, uh, are looking at. I, I object that the community has no voice in it because they, they purposely- Well, we haven't discussed it, but because you, but what I'm, at, what I'm saying to you is that you seem to be against a project because you keep talking about these uh, homeless shelters and this and that and the other. And if, if in fact the community board is going to look at something, they would look at it as a whole as to what is being offered and, and to the community. I, I couldn't I couldn't agree with you more, Ms. Moses. Yeah, but yeah so that's what that's what in but, my but head, I mean I keep listening. But it's it's it's, it's it's what's being offered as a whole uh, for this particular property. The, the community is in the dark about this and it's a land use issue, even I'm not in the dark about it because I read about it. So, so it's the, it was it is it, state funded. And and I think your concern is from what I from what I remember, you were mainly concerned about two homeless shelters. No, uh, no. Well, I read about it, and and it, to be very honest with you, I'm not going to give my opinion on it this evening. But I definitely read about uh, wh what they want to do with the property. So, so, so do do you have an issue with the the committee saying whether they're for it? Well, I don't. I'm not. I I think you need to bring it forward to the. You know, a, I think to the land use committee, which minutes. is where we are now. So right okay. now, I don't see it as a land use issue. Even though they're changing the land use? And well, when that the happens, then I'll, uh, somebody can, that committee can look at it. I do not see that. At this There's going to be no time. The community <laughs> is going to have the same issue. Right, not, right, right now, it is a state okay, issue. Right. I'm not going to argue well, about that. I, I think um, just a point of clarification. If I remember um, Jay's discussion a while back, I think the issue is, the challenge is that the city gave the state the land for a specific use, which was for it to be a hospital or some kind of medical facility. Right. Now that this project, Vital Brooklyn, is now going to repurpose the land for residential housing, that was not the intent and the, re and the deed restriction may require that if, it's, if the use is changing, then the city may have some say as to how the property is going to be used going forward. And I think that's what Jay's issue is, that if the, it's not just a state call because the city gave the land to the state for a specific purpose. Right, but and, and, again, and there's an act. That's, the, again, general, that's being the followed general, up. No, uh, we so, just listen to your side. Jay, Jay, no. Jay, I'm going to close this out. All right, okay. Can I, okay. No no Can I just say something to Jay, please? Mm -hmm. Jay, I, I, you know, I'm, I understand what it is that you're talking about, right? I understand about the fact that you're looking at the deed, but at the end of the day, Jay, there's nothing that a community board can do. If you feel like the like the city is not adhering to the deed, then you have to do an Article 78. You have to file a lawsuit because even if you even if you got CB9 to look at it and make a recommendation that this should go in front of the city council and it should go in part of the EULA process, even if you got that, even if you got that, it doesn't mean that the, the state is going to adhere to that. The state is not going to listen right. to that. Thank you. You, you have you. to file. You an attorney. Right. Well, article 78. I, I, I understand that, but there's it, the general development corporation law. There's a tremendous bunch of laws that this committee is not looking at. And the laws yes. say what? Even not if you, the committee not did look at it, even if the committee did a whole review of all those laws and came up with the determination that you were right, what then? It Nothing. goes to it, ge general development corporation law. I think it's article 16. It says that if the city has to 
give up a right, an ownership right. There's a I whole understand thing. that, but you're, what you're not listening to me is that the community board has no kind of power, especially this one, no yeah. kind of power to force the state to recognize that. You have to do that in an Article 78. Right, we, you, they can't, they can't, they can't force it. You do that. But the, but the community board can give its opinion as part of the ULERP and the ULERP and is- it can, but it doesn't mean anything. It, community I think boards, it, opinions I, don't I, mean I'll, anything. I'll tell you why I think it does. All okay, I'm time. gonna end this. And, and, and like I but, said, I'm gonna, I'm sorry, Alicia, I, I really, I, I'm not gonna even go on with this again. The community again. board to do something when you're the one who has to do it. The community board cannot file a law. Only you can. Right, but, but it doesn't but, matter if the community the, the city council will not go. The city council will not go against the community board. It always city, does. Only if there's, there's, only if there's a literally every I time. Think we take this offline. Yes, I'm talk. going to again, again. Thank you. Listen, no yes, I like to uh, again. I like to um, end the meeting, and um, again, Jay, I'm I'm just going to no recommend problem. that you bring it forth. If you got an issue, bring it forth. At, at the uh, entire board meeting, because at this point, I'm not going to take it up. At no problem. The okay. Thank, you very, thank you very much. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you. So can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So made. Huh? So made. I didn't get the motion. Oh, uh, I made a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? I don't know what no raised hand. Um, second, second. <laughs> right. And I, listen, since I won't see everybody, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, a good family day. And I will see you on the 13th. And subcommittee, I know y'all going to do an excellent job. Nicola, you got that one. Talk to y'all later. <laughs> everybody have a good night. Take care. Good night. Good night, good night everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.